All right, of course, it's still uh, TVC breakfast. Now, we told you earlier we're going to be talking about uh, the new outbreak of disease in Biosester. That's the monkey pox. Uh, well, the chief medical director of the Niger Delta University Teaching Hospital, Professor Demir Ogoina, has confirmed 13 suspected cases of monkey pox in Bielsa State. Uh, of course, uh, Professor Ogoina, who spoke with TVC News uh, Bielsa correspondent of Vietnam, George, confirmed that one medical doctor is among those in Infected by the virus. Of an outbreak of the monkeypox disease in Bielsa first broke on the internet, but not much information was given until I met the State Commissioner for Health, Professor Ebitimi Tula Etebo, who confirmed cases in Agbura and Biseni areas of Yenagoa local government area. We have an outbreak of uh, monkeypox in. Uh, in a local government, precisely in Agbura. That was the first, uh, where we saw the first index case in a, an 11 year old boy. Some other cases from uh, Bissini. We have mobilized through WHO, we mobilized all stakeholders Nigerian Center for Disease Control, uh, Affinet, and they are doing all that is necessary to ensure that we break the transmission of the infection. News of the outbreak of the disease is already on the pages of national newspapers, but not many persons in the state are aware of its presence. We keep seeing strange, strange ailments in the world disease. So you've not heard of it? I've never heard of it. Somebody just sent a picture of the monkeypox stuff in my phone like man it's funny and i i seem not to believe but one should be very careful we, got, we can't just say anything we could be very very careful we should be very careful if it's in biasa man man man, man we'll just pray that god should help us i went to the niger delta university teaching hospital at okolobri where the chief medical director professor dimir ogoina confirmed that some monkeypox patients have been quarantined at the institution this morning we had two additional cases coming from town and the second one apparently came from outside the state we're still trying to investigate uh, if the infection started outside the state or within the state. We have so far admitted about five patients. Um, three of those patients have been discharged. They are doing well, including a medical doctor. Uh, so I believe uh, we'll be able to contain the outbreak. So far, uh, we have about 13 suspected cases now. Currently, we have three patients. We have not reported any deaths. Uh, the patient that came in about two days ago, she's doing well. She's a pregnant lady. She's doing well. She's getting better. For an airborne disease that can be transmitted from an animal to human being or from person to person, the chief medical director of the Niger Delta University Teaching Hospital, Professor Dimir Ogoina, wants people in the state to cultivate health practices that would halt the spread of the monkeypox virus. Of Timet George TVC News, Okolobiri, by Yelsa State. All right, let's now uh, you know, bring in our correspondent of Vietnam, George from Bielsa State, to tell us more about uh, you know, the outbreak of the disease. Of Vietnam, thank you very much. Uh, what, what, what exactly, be, beyond what uh, the Commissioner of Health you know, told you, uh, did anyone you know, tell you the cause of the outbreak in Bielsa? Uh, well, the these uh first of all good morning uh Obielu and Ngozi. um these are technical things in the medical profession and of course uh, they would as much as they can uh conceal certain things they didn't feel it's necessary at this point in time for public consumption but um, they were a bit friendly i had access to the niger delta university teaching hospital where i met a professor Demir Ogoina, the chief medical director. Now, I wanted to get evidence that actually there are patients there at the medical facility, uh, the medical institution, the NDUTH, but they wouldn't let me uh, go close to where the patients are, you know, because uh, they had been quarantined and uh, they, they told me it's not good for uh, public consumption, that is the visuals. Even the hospital staff would not be 
um, comfortable anymore. They would be somewhat an, uh, confused, you know, when they see the visual of where the patients have been kept. So, they, despite the cooperation, the questions and all we discussed, uh, the place was just closed by, but they said, no, I wouldn't go there. I was willing to be quarantined, actually, to go get visuals of those who have been affected, but they wouldn't let me. That was how far I could go. Uh, but um, so far, they haven't told me uh, the reason for the cause of it. I could only get uh, little information from the Internet about uh, how one can uh, contract the disease. Mm. It could be from uh, monkeys, rats, uh, uh, to a person, and then from person to person. And that this is where it comes in. One has to be careful. Yes, Handshakes, indeed. body contacts because of body, uh, body flu. Uh, of course, we have a medical doctor who will be finding out exactly uh, you know, what this disease uh, is all about. Uh, in your report of Yateme, we gathered that not many people are aware of this disease. As a matter of fact, many actually doubted when they received uh, some kind of information on their phones. What kind of public enlightenment is going on in Bayelsa State to ensure that people are uh, informed? Yes, it's quite sad that uh, many are not aware of, aware of it. But I must say I put myself in their shoes too because uh, three days ago I never heard anything about it. I, I just saw on the internet somebody posted. I thought it was perhaps uh, one of those rumors one could just easily discard over time. But um, when I saw the health uh, commissioner, uh, Professor Ibitimitula, he confirmed it. That was when I decided to go to the streets and then confirmed also that many were not aware. But somebody told me something, an unlikely source. I just looked at him, have you heard about it? And he said, yes. How did you hear about it? I heard it on the radio. That was how I got to know that the government has stepped up efforts to uh, inform the public about the outbreak of the monkeypox disease mm. in Biosa State. All right, Ovia Teme, George, uh, stay on this. We'll be coming back to you, of course, uh, from time to time to uh, get the latest developments about this outbreak. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Ngozi. You can always bank on TVC. That's where you work first, <laughs> accurate and reliable. We're staying on it. We'll give you much more information as it breaks. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, our medical doctor, Tuyi Me Bawadu, is uh, with us right here in the studio uh, to uh, enlighten us more about this. Ah, here we are again. Another outbreak. Monkeypox for so many people. Uh, it may have even sounded like some prank by some uh, joker somewhere. Uh, but tell us about this uh, monkeypox um, outbreak. What exactly is it? Yeah, thank you, Ngozi. So exactly, um, mm. monkeypox is a viral disease. Uh, this is one of the viral diseases that actually, you know, um, manifest in monkeys. You know, most of the time, mm. you see that those diseases in those uh, wild animals, they, they act as reservoir. They don't actually, you know, show the signs and symptoms of the diseases. But for monkeypox, actually the rashes were seen in the monkeys um, in the 50s, uh, late 50s, and then they had to take serum. And finally, you know, sometimes they found out it was a viral disease in the monkeys. Um, um, most of the time, the monkeys, rodents, squirrels, you know, and, and rats can actually, you know, be host to these things, and they actually manifest the disease and then they can spread it to a human. Um, like, uh, it's similar to smallpox. You know, smallpox was eradicated in about, uh, around 1980. The world mm -hmm. finally declared, uh, was declared free. Smallpox from free. From smallpox, you know. But the key difference is the fact that the, the size of the, of, the, of the rashes is bigger, you know, and then the spread is not a, a, a typical smallpox spread. Um, how does it manifest? Mm -hmm. The incubation period essentially is about, it's going to be as short as six days, and can be as long as 21 days. Um, that is when you know the virus enters, and then you are wondering when it's going to manifest. That incubation well, period will, of course, have to do with the person's um, immunity. Immune system. With, That's with why that? you have that range: okay. the virulence of the of the virus and the immune system of the person being infected. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the first thing usually is those uh, non uh, what we call constitutional symptoms. You know, the fever, headache, and but the key things about this monkeypox is the fact that 
the lymphatic system the, is targeted. The lymph mm. nodes become enlarged. You see massive enlargement of lymph nodes. And then um, it spreads, and especially during the invasive period of the disease, okay, of, mm. the, of the virus. The virus enters, and then we, have, we see large enlargement of lymph nodes. That takes about five, six days. Then after that, the rashes start appearing. Mm. These rashes are typically bigger than, uh, than uh, smallpox. More like uh, boils. Small uh, yes, like mm. boils. They are not as tiny as um, measles rash. So, and they, uh, you, you, we see them first of all in the, around the palms, you know, mm. and the and the feet. Okay, and then the thing now can now spread and take over the rest of the body. You know, so oh, the, 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 the rashes have evolved to become to have pores and then crust and then break down and then heals over some days. So that is exactly how oh, it manifests. Yeah, but good enough, the, the, it's not the fatality, uh, the fatality rate. Is, rate fatality yes. rate is just about mm. one to ten percent, and it's okay. not that um, deadly. It's that deadly, as you say. But right. that is what we have. Mm. All right, presented. now let's look at how, I mean, the the um, the cause of it in those communities mentioned now in in biocestid. Could uh, could it be that the communities were affected by rodents or that because oh, you know they had you know monkeys you know around that you know uh, brought about the spread again another pointer uh, to the fact that uh, of, of the intricate relationship between us and our environment mm -hmm. you know um we've been seeing a rise in the cases of epidemics it's not less of it but we're seeing more of it why are we seeing more of epidemics mm -hmm. simply because uh, of eco uh, um, environmental factors, mm. ecological factors, and social factors. These are the things that are perpetuating the rise of epidemics regularly and frequently. And now, as long as we keep um, uh, you know, um, spreading human settlements without regards to the environmental condition, without regards to the ecological condition, contact between human and animals mm. will keep you know, getting on the increase. And le le let's be reminded that what happens at the first that there's a jump F of, of these organisms from their reservoir to human. Mm. Okay. The only time you can get that jump is when you have contact with those animals. Either you hunt them for food. Is it just physical contact or you, actually yeah. eating? Like yeah. in the case of, uh, uh, we hear, I mean, some stories concerning this, that some, peop some persons actually ate uh, monkeys and from there they contracted the disease and the rest of the community, of course. Yeah, he said, he said, you know, monkeys, meat is a delicacy in some part of, you know, Africa, mm. you know, and then it's hunted for food. Squirrel is uh, hunted for food. Rodents are hunted for food. You know, as long as you spread human sentiment or you, you hunt these things for food, again, you are going to see quite increase uh, the likelihood of this jump of these organisms mm. from those animals to human. As long as you are involved in, you know, extractive industry, trying to get resources, you mm. know, searching for these uh, minerals, metals, and all those things, and then you have to enter the bush and do all those things, you are going to get this disease. As long as your health system is weak, mm -hmm. and this is a, these are key issues, because they point out to the fact that we need to sit down and sincerely look at our health system. As long as you cannot do surveillance and pinpoint and pick those epidemics before they start, uh, even at the level of the animals, you can, then you, you are playing with, with fire, as mm. it's right. you're going to see more of those epidemics. As long as people, people are poor, they cannot actually feed, mm. they, you know, and the immune system is compromised, and we have this bulging population of people that, you know, um, um, you know bulging population of youths that are not having anything to do. Yes. As long as you have those things, you know, um, you're going to have epidemics. Of course, poverty is a major, is, is, uh, is a, is a major, is a major factor. Uh, All right, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue this discussion with Dr. Tui Mebaonle. All right, and welcome back. Of course, it's still TVC Breakfast, and we are talking about the outbreak of monkeypox in Bielsa State. And we still have Dr. Uh, uh, Meba Wondu here in the studio with us, uh, taking a look at um, how, I mean, the, up, the, the, the modus operandi of the new disease, monkeypox. Uh, doctor, well, uh, in, in one of the... Um, I mean, one of the respondents, you know, who talked to our correspondent in Bielsa, 
apparently was uh, you know surprised uh, you know saying he had he hadn't heard about you know monkeypox and all that at this point it has broken out already and the government has uh, his work in you know, a cut out for it what more do you think that the government and bias and needs to be doing at the moment in terms of sensitization in terms of letting people know about it let, let, let's first of all appreciate them for actually taking those um, immediate measures to try to curtail the thing and and be responsive and bringing the information out. Um, key, f key issues, key mm. things that need to happen in our health system is the health literacy campaign, mm. um, which should actually be the first policy in terms of informing people, in terms of actually you know, um, setting up indices that can really peak epidemics and our preparedness mm -hmm. for, for that epidemic. Okay, now... The health information is such that it has to go as local as possible. We must, you know, take it down to the grassroots in the language people understand mm -hmm. at their cultural level and at their understanding. Because, again, you can see that if we don't do that, we create room for ignorance, mm. we create room for superstition, we create room for wrong reaction mm. to so such things. So it's not enough for government to say, look, uh, no calls for alarm. No, it's not, it's uh, not People it's not don't eat monkey meat, don't no, eat not, uh, it, bush meat and all of that. It's not sufficient. You know, um, yesterday um, I, I was one of the panel discussants. Uh, 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 Lagos State is trying to train the low KEDA people to really do this kind of thing. Mm. And we're looking at it, we're discussing what is possible, what can be done. And it's important because now you need to recruit people at that local level that can quickly point out to those kind of things. They need to understand the interaction between them and the environment, yes. why it is key to treat animals in a certain way and ensure that you don't really get uh, you know, too much contact with them. Of course, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the fruit, root of this is food security. Mm -hmm. Because as long as they're looking for protein and have to survive and eat and sell those bush meat, mm -hmm. again, they need to really get involved in those, uh, with, with those animals. As long as they have to fell trees you know, mm -hmm. um, indiscriminately, they will get in contact with those animals. So again, the government um, the mode of information should be such that people understand the dynamics of those diseases so that they don't ascribe it to spirituality or, mm -hmm. de or demon. So, so, and then we'll know what to do, how to respond, in such a way that even those people that are trained to get good community, yes. you know, uh, enlighten people on even simple hand washing and how to keep their, their, their distance from such uh, uh, illness. So it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. And health literacy from every media, uh, every medium we have, mm -hmm. every medium we have, we must be able to really push this health literacy. And those campaigns, sh how should they be periodic? Or mm -hmm. constant bombardment on radio, on TV, that when a, a new outbreak happens, this is what you do, this is what you don't do, and all of that. I wonder how that will uh, help. Uh, it, do, it does appear it's only when these when, outbreaks yes, happen that you hear, like when Ebola something. happened and then they were, there was a campaign, yeah. wash your hands, get uh -huh. sanitizers, you know, and all of that. Yeah, again, again we, we, need, we need to heighten this campaign and make it a more permanent thing. Yes. You know, it's not like a campaign, it's a, it's a complete literacy It should thing. be a culture. Yes. It's a culture with mm. us that we should look at it and say that, listen, we, here we are. We know we have a weak health system, mm -hmm. we have challenges with human resources for health, we have challenges with funding for epidemics as it is, and mm -hmm. even health generally. Mm -hmm. But these are the things we can do that are cost effective for us to deal with uh, And it's with even more disheartening epidemic. when we hear that the samples of this virus had to be taken to a World Health Organization lab in Dakar, Senegal. That's an African country, and the giant of Africa does not have that. <laughs> All right, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Dr. Tui Mebaondu, thank you so much for joining us My pleasure, on TBC brother. Breakfast. I hope the next time we see it will be some good news. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not another you have outbreak. To come and discuss another outbreak again. Yeah. It's tough to walk in newsroom. Yeah. It's always bad, bad news. All right, uh, we'll take a break and return with more on TVC Breakfast. Stay with us.